Here are five tips that will help you build an Ableton Live set of multiple songs. Now I wanna stress before we get into this, I'm gonna be talking about using Ableton Live from a backing tracks or playback scenario using tracks on stage, as opposed to a live looping scenario, which would be a different context and we would apply it differently. So tip number one I have for you, if you're gonna build a live set of multiple songs to use on stage in Ableton Live in a playback backing tracks environment, Tip number one is to work from a template. Now using a template is gonna allow you to save your effort to do the work once and never have to do it again. It really is a huge, huge time saver. Now using a template is gonna allow you to um, define your, your track formatting. It's gonna allow you to save your mini mapping, to save your audio routing. So that, again, you do that work once and never have to do it again. Uh, this is a, a huge, huge time waster that I see people do, redoing work every single time they run tracks on stage. Now if you wanna get this exact exact template that I have here. Download it completely for free. It's available for Ableton Live 9, 10, 11, and higher. Intro, standard, and suite, PC, or Mac. Then head to from studiotostage.com slash template to download this template. Now, tip number two that I have for you if you wanna build a live set of multiple songs is to format every single one of your songs using that template. Now, uh, how should you format your songs? Here's what I would suggest. Uh, number one, you should use a click track and use a consistent click track, consistent click sound across every single one of your songs. Uh, number two, you should use a tempo track so that you can save your tempo in your Ableton Live uh, song so that when you drag your song into your set, you don't have to redo the tempo. No more drawing automation in, in arrangement view to save your tempo. Number three, you should use a guide cue so that your band knows exactly where you are at all times uh, and use a consistent guide cue sound uh, across every single one of your songs. Number four is use what I call a markers track, which is gonna allow you to essentially save your locators and your song sections so that when you build your set, again, you're not redoing work and you know exactly where each one of your song sections are. Uh, you could also use an original track if you want to. Um, and then uh, there's some extra things I have in this template for audio routing, as well as some locators pre-done for key mapping. And then you could use uh, and do these, uh, these locators for MIDI mapping as well too, if you want. So that's just a couple things that uh, uh, tips I use, approaches I take when it comes to building a live set uh, and how I format my songs. Uh, but tip number three to save you time and to help you build a live set of multiple songs is to build your set in Arrangement View. And I know what you're thinking, you're going, well, but Arrangement View is for recording. It's it's a linear view. Session View is performing. I heard it on that, that YouTube video that that guy said. He said it's gonna take longer in Arrangement View than it is in Session View. And, and that guy said that I could use follow actions to have freedom and flexibility in Arrangement View. Well, uh, you can use follow actions to recreate uh, somewhat things that you can do in Arrangement View natively. For example, pressing play and having your song go from the left to right, that's what Arrangement View does. To get a Session View to do that same thing, it's gonna take a lot of work, you're gonna to have to do a lot of math, and I don't know about you, but I don't like math, so I stay away from that. But building my live set in Arrangement View is gonna give you the ability to have freedom and flexibility without chopping your song sections up. It's gonna save you tons of time, uh, and it's uh, gonna give you the ability to, to focus more on transitions. It's gonna give you the ability to focus more on the performance, not think about triggering this scene and triggering that scene at exactly the right time. And if you're in a uh, linear type performance, which is what we do when we're on stage, that's what Arrangement View is built for. Again, it's built for uh, linear performances, and so it makes sense to do that in linear. Now, like I always stress, linear does not mean you can't repeat, doesn't mean you can't have flexibility. It just means you're stepping on stage, using, performing a song, uh, and going from left to right. So if that's what you're doing, then check out Arrangement View. Now, if you believe the lie that it takes longer to build a live set in Arrangement View, then click the link in the description of this video where you'll see me build a live set in less than five minutes, and you'll see that that's simply is not true. Now, I'm gonna tell you uh, I, my next tip that specifically has to do with audio in, in just a second, but before I do that, uh, subscribe to the channel, enable the bell icon, and post a brand new tutorial every single day uh, all about using Ableton Live on stage, and it will save you time and it will save you money watching those. You could try to figure it out on your own, but don't do it, you're gonna waste time. Check out these tutorials. Tip number four has all to do with audio, and that is to use sends and returns for audio. Here's what I mean by that. So here in my Ableton Live template, you can see I have four return tracks set up for audio. 
And what's really cool about these return tracks is these return tracks are already routed to outputs on my interface. But you look at this and you go, hmm, but Will, uh, you, you don't have eight outputs right here. This is set up for an eight output interface. What do you do? Well, all I have to do to change this to go from an eight output interface to a two output interface is do this. And I'm using two outputs, right? So now all of my return tracks are using two outputs as opposed to using eight outputs. And you go, okay, Will, I, I get you. That's great, that's great, but don't you have to go back in and reformat your set every single time and reroute your tracks to your outputs every single time? Well, no, I'm opening a live set here that has, uh, I don't know how many songs this has, maybe 10, 15 songs in it. And what's really cool about this format and this particular process is when I show you what this looks like, every single song has its own master volume, right? So I can adjust the level of every single one of these songs individually. And then when I open up my return tracks, you can see in this scenario, I'm set up for six outputs. And if I go into this song, you can see I'm using sends to route to those return tracks. So what this means is I open every single one of my songs, I use sends to send that to return tracks. And then when, best of all, I go to build my live set, those audio routings come into my live set. I don't have to change them. And then again, if I'm in a scenario, a situation where uh, suddenly I need to go from six outputs to a, a two output setup, I just select my return tracks and I do that. And now I'm using simply two outputs. So using sends and returns will save you so much time for audio routing. If you want more information on uh, kind of how to do that, check out the link in the description of this video where I give you a more in-depth walkthrough on how to do that. Okay, tip number five, final tip for building a live set of multiple songs is to keep it simple. Here's what I mean by that. Let's particularly talk about keeping it simple with MIDI routings. Number one, to keep it simple, I can build my set in a range review. We've already talked about that because I could press play and my set is just going to play from left to right. But how do we keep it simple with MIDI mappings? Here's the four MIDI mappings I suggest that you make in every single one of your live sets. So if I go into Command M, you can see they're already done here. Play, Stop, Previous Locator, and next locator. Uh, with those four mini mappings, you can play your Ableton Live set, you can repeat any song section, you can skip ahead to any song section, and then you can press stop at the end. And you could go from there, you could add some virtual uh, MIDI buses in to have your song automatically stop, to have it stop and automatically select your next song, to create a repeat track so that at the end of your song or at the end of a song section, you can repeat that song section and pre-plan on that and pre-program that. But number one thing I always tell people, when it comes to building a live set, it's it's got to be simple. You want to step on stage and you're not supposed to be focused on your computer, focused on your computer screen. You're supposed to be focused on the, the, the performance. You're supposed to be in the moment, playing music, focus on the music, not focus on, oh, is my Ableton live set? Is it going to work? Do, do I trigger this? Do I trigger that? Which one do I want to do? Keep it simple. Okay, my final bonus tip is you should subscribe to the From Studio to Stage YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. I post a brand new tutorial every single day. 10 a.m. Central, it's for free, and I don't want you to miss it. And now, my other bonus -er tip, if we could call it that, would be to head to fromstudiostage.com slash template and download my free tracks template. Like I mentioned, it's completely free. It's available for Live 9, 10, 11, and higher. Uh, intro standard and suite, and it works for PC or Mac. You can format all your songs. You can build a template, build a set from that template. It's gonna save you so much time. It's gonna give you freedom and flexibility, and maybe best of all, it's going to be stable. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.